know that doesn't apply, but that's the interpretation, right? You can do the same thing scientifically and say, look at marsupials. They can eat their young if they don't have any, if they, marsupials uh, have their have their offspring come out very young, like literally like a fetus, except that it's not inside, right? And um, they'll eat it in case, like, they don't have any food around them, right? And you can say that the name of the game scientifically, speaking scientifically, is to have offspring, they can live longer and have offspring themselves. And having offspring at a bad time would be negative for that person, so or that or that creature. So if they could get rid of that, they wouldn't have that problem. They can have that offspring when they choose. That would be scientifically and evolutionary, sorry, evolutionarily uh, better for them. So it comes down to interpretation. That's what I'm trying to say. Like you cannot get away from having making this like moral point of view, like or, or so tone, tone, point of view. what I will what I will say to you, tone is again, I would adjust my approach depending on who I'm talking to. Just like I can back it up scientifically, I can back it up with scripture as well. But I, I cater to the audience that I'm dealing with. It's just like when you think from the spiritual perspective, I'm not going to win somebody to the kingdom of God beating them upside the head with the Bible. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got to find the common ground with them. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and to, to continue the conversation. So if I come to someone, like, uh, listen to what Set Free is saying. Missy knows and Ma Madame knows they just came out of that room. If I go into that room, into a place with those individuals talking about the Bible, they're not going to receive anything that I'm saying. So I have to adjust my approach. D does that make sense, so? Oh. Uh, well, I don't actually disagree with you on, on, on a particular level. Um, are you you were referring to what I was saying or to what Jonathan was? Saying? It seems that he's hung up because I mentioned the science approach first and something to the effect. So in his mind, I guess he thinks that I don't have a moral position on it. I absolutely have a moral position. Missy knows my moral position. Set free knows my moral position. No, I, no, I think you misunderstand me. Uh, way deeper than that. Saying that that people are not going to be receptive depending on the audience they're not going to be receptive that's a leadership trait you have to it's just like when you supervise people when you you know what i'm saying i was in the workforce for 20 plus years i cannot respond the same way to every single person i have to adjust to the I think he was also saying, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan, I, I, th I think you were also saying that um, it's hard to divorce uh, your moral uh, argument from that that logic or scientific argument because there's an underpinning uh that you know your, your morals and ethics underpin even that scientific argument that they have and vice and vice versa um that's what i'm seemingly getting from you that there's a connection there as well that somehow our opinion on something our, our morals and ethics uh it motivates it it, it, you can't like divorce the two from one another. We can, we can state them separately, as Krishanda has said, and I do it quite often. I do it all the time. Um, but I do have different positions um, based on, and I, I believe one supports the other based on my, uh, you know, both logically, uh, you know, biblically, et cetera. So, again, I know that that's not going to fly, now, especially now for the group of girls I hang with most of them. It's not going to fly with them. As a matter of fact, I think most of the, uh, the, the folks that I maybe do rules with on Clubhouse are pro-choice. So I, I stand up and I say I'm pro-life for these reasons. Um, and, and people do listen because I, I do have an argument to, to make that is both based on morals and ethics and on science. So that, that and if people respect that, then they may not agree. So that I think going in it with both things in mind is an important thing, but also like the founder said, like Paula said, knowing your audience is also extremely important because I am not, I personally, I know I'm not going to get through to maybe 90% of the people that um, I'm in, you know, I'm in at least some community with because they see this issue very, very differently and see this as a, a, a matter of their own freedom and their own rights being entrenched on. And I, I, again, I understand, I understand the arguments, but I've already, I already have my moral and ethical position on it. I hope that makes sense, and I hope that gets to the root of what you were trying to say. I hope, I hope I'm not. I'm and here's what I'm trying to explain to you, John. I'm saying to you, we can look at what someone is saying because you are right that there's what are called the facts versus the interpretation of the facts. You are correct about that. What I'm saying is 
if I take someone who is just coming up with a different interpretation of the facts, what I'm doing is I'm going to say, hey, let's take this interpretation that you give and see if it stands up to scrutiny. If, um, let, let's say someone says, I don't know, the unborn doesn't become a person until consciousness begins. And I'll just take that stance and see if it stands on its own way. I'll just say, hey, well, let, let, let's, let, let's look at this scenario. Let's look at this criterion of yours. If, if consciousness is the defining line in which uh, where rights or value begins, then I'll just simply say, what about other contexts in which there's no consciousness? Like, at, like for instance, if someone's in a coma, are you saying there's no rights for a person in a coma? If consciousness is your de demarcating pointer, how you interpret it, uh, what about someone who uh, who's dead? What about a dead corpse? Because we don't even mistreat uh, corpses, human corpses, okay? If, if someone was to mistreat or mishandle a human corpse and were found out about it, there would be serious legal ramifications for it. So we even have to respect the dead in their non-conscious state of human life. So what I'm saying to you is, if, there, if consciousness is going to be their demarcation line, of value and rights and that sort of a thing, I'll just take their standard and use it against them and say, hey, do you consistently apply this conscious standard um, across the board and how you determine and interpret rights? You clearly do not. It's what's called an internal critique. I'm just taking what they say and see if it stands on its own terms. Yeah. The fact that someone has a different interpretation doesn't mean that you can't show how their own foundation doesn't crumble under that's true, but then the, what I'm, my point that I'm trying to make here, right, is the necessity to include the moral the moral stance, right? Because here, here's something you're not going to be able to argue me out of, right? But, it, but, here's, but it's morally bankrupt, right? But because it's morally bankrupt, and it's just scientific, you're not going to have anything to say that's not moral. Your critique doesn't have to be moral about it. And I'm going to say I don't subscribe to those lines. You're going to have nothing to say. Hey, and I don't believe this, right? But just to show you, just for, just for argument's sake, right? Hey. Women having the ability to choose when their children are born gives us higher chance of like higher chances of survival since they get to choose when. Also puts them in better economic situations. Plus, marsupials can do it as well. So if the goal of life supposedly is to have offspring, this is the best point of view. Now try to destroy that point without using moral factors. You won't be able to. Because the question essentially is moral, right? So that's like that's one of my biggest points of view, right? Like acceptance that the question is moral in nature, right? And then the understanding that it needs to work for society, and it also needs to work in all the other laws. Which is why your point on saying, oh, if it starts at consciousness, which I don't exactly agree with, right? Because no one can pin down consciousness or when life, like the word life, that as we all use it, right, starts, right? And that's the issue. Right? And that, that was the point that I was trying to make, that even within the scientific literature, when, say, life starts here blank, the term life, and the reason why there isn't a peer-reviewed journal, why, why it wasn't me being petty, right, is because there isn't a study of when life starts, because it's a very ambiguous term, and we've left it ambiguous for the necessity of our society, right? We've left it like that on purpose, right? So it's not, if you're talking about, like, when RNA starts reproducing to do similar DNA, then you can have a conversation there. We can pinpoint the moment, right? But this is a consensus rather than a peer review because no one is investigating it, right? And I don't think that even if we did investigate it, we would find some other point. It's because this essentially has been, it will always be a moral dilemma, right? And that's that's what I'm trying to get at in this conversation. It's not to try to put anybody down. I'm sorry it wasn't more clear about the difference between a scientific consensus and a peer review, but it does point out to the fact that even with the scientific Community, this is still in a very weird way a moral stance right rather than a scientific one right we've chosen a specific moment that we believe the natural processes will inevitably lead to a life and because of the lack of our conscious of our conscious action stopping that after that checkpoint or after that mark we demarcate it as the start of life we separate our unconscious actions there our body does from our conscious actions right and that is philosophically profound and that is at the basis of all of this conversation, right? Yet people will, will try to like, people will try to simplify it, and we shouldn't, because it, the question in itself is complex. A better understanding of what we're really trying to separate when we say we can't prevent it or we can't do this, like putting it into statement, like no, this is where my conscious actions can no longer have an effect 
on this on the on what the, on the body is going to do right that is the divorce between my consciousness and my body it is like a natural process that i subscribe to and because i have no choice like i don't have a choice i can't take a pill back in time and stop that from happening i assign that as a start of life you divorce yourself from the start of life and that is a very western idea right and there's a necessity to have a conversation about that right like there's a necessity because that doesn't happen everywhere around the world now i do agree with you is ultimately a moral question i don't dispute that in fact uh that's my focal point of argumentation whenever i'm having this issue on a regular basis what i am saying to you is if someone is going to make a scientific point i'm going to see if they seriously believe in their so-called scientific point i'm going to say if you're telling me out of your mouth that you're appealing to a scientific point of view then i'm going to see how serious you, you believe it by asking you questions based on what seems to be the uh the general consensus or the general view of what's in the science and we have to go by we have to go by what we know not what we don't know and there's a lot of things that we have discovered that's pretty much been universally agreed. And it's not arbitrary. It's just that when we come to certain conclusions scientifically, uh, we, we, we come to certain conclusions until we have strong enough evidence to think otherwise. Like, like in terms of the conception question, like we say um, human life begins at conception. We're talking about the biological essence of human life. Unless we got standalone doesn't encompass 50 percent of the genetic blueprint anytime you're talking about a human you're talking about an entity an entity that encompasses 100 percent of the uh, genetic blueprint necessarily so the idea is this and i'm not saying i'm some advocate of the morning after pill or something like that and th th there is a serious question that has to be discussed and i would agree with you on that level but um that would only just speak to the aspect of uh, if, if you want me to get more biblical, if you want me to get more of a sort of a metaphysical sort of a standpoint, that would speak That's to just, 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 more, to just I mean, hold on, right hold on. That would speak more to the fact that we live in a sinful world, in my view, and even when people have certain beliefs about certain things, in certain ways they can act in inconsistent ways. Sometimes the human heart, this, the depravity of man and, and the condition of the sinful heart can motivate people to act even against certain convictions that they have in certain points because man is sinful. So what you're really talking about is the idea that in certain areas, people will go against certain things they say. It's simply because we live in a sinful, fallen world. It has no bearing or argument against like the pro-life stance or anything like that, one can act in an inconsistent way in certain elements and still have a 100% morally solid position. That just means that they may act in inconsistent ways due to the fact that they have sin in their lives. That doesn't mean their argument for uh, against abortion rights or anything like that is invalid. The fact that someone may be inconsistent with some of their moral standpoints doesn't provide any arguments necessarily that their position is wrong. You're just talking about how someone will behave, not necessarily whether their position fundamentally is legit or illegitimate. Yeah, like this, this whole this whole debate, like between both sides, is still with inconsistencies, right? Because that some sides, the people that are pro-life, some of them say, "Yeah, but I'm not cool with people aborting babies when they're literally like two weeks away from giving birth. That's horrible, right?" And on the pro-life side, you're like, life begins at a at a conception, yet I'm okay with the afterday pill, right? But the reason why I'm trying to define this, like, I, I understand that people have a bunch of caveats, and to be honest, a lot of this doesn't affect a lot of people. I think most of us in the room have been safe enough not to have to encounter a problem like this, because we're responsible, right? But I'm not going to, like, imply what, what other people who will go through this are responsible or not. But my thing is, is because it's a societal question, right? Because this is a question that affects people who are, uh, all types of Christians, all types of people that live in America, right? Even with the Christians or disagreements or an after they pill or like even like uh, contraceptives, you know? Um, there is that part between, right, that like 
the, the after day pill and then there's an abortion, right? There's two types of abortions that I know of, right? Not the expert on abortions. One where it's surgical, where the embryo is removed, and one where the embryo is not really formed yet, right? And like you said, it doesn't have all the parts yet. It's like like a couple of weeks done, like 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 you know, a couple of weeks in, you know. So it still has like it, it hasn't formed completely, and you take a special type of pill to then uh, eliminate that, right? And it will. So I, I don't know. There's so many points, right? And I, I, I throughout this whole argument, I can't help. But uh, I, I don't know if you heard about the Buddhist idea, Gigi movie, describe a life as a spider web filled with droplets, and the droplets are what we call events in our life, yet there is no stop or pause between events. There's only continuity. Like, and, and I think that's what we try to do with this abortion thing, right? There is no there is no start, there is no stop, right? Like, from the moment that you be, you look at it from a scientific point of view, free will, you really can't explain free will in a scientific point of view, right? So there is no start or stop to your actions, right? The same thing with an embryo. The moment of inception is just a long line of events that was going to lead to that person's life. You know, you're leading to a long chain of events that's going to lead to your great grandson's life if you choose to have kids, and they choose to have one, right? But for society's sake, we need to put we need to put like a barrier somewhere, right? And where do we put that barrier, right? Where is it at the moment of conception? Because people who are pro-life are very fickle about this too as are people that are pro-choice you know like but like, well, like where do we put this barrier are we against all abortions or are we just against the abortions that, that we don't like like the ones where they take out the embryo through surgery like can we unequivocally say that if we believe that it, that life begins at conception then after day pills are the same thing as murdering the baby like when you're nine months old can we say that, that like a thief still a hundred dollars versus a thousand dollars are still both thieves or like what's your position on this right because if we're approaching this morally then how do we see that all right or is there or is there another factor that's what i want to bring in i don't want to call everybody a hypocrite because i'm 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 plagued under the same issues right but there must be another factor that makes us look nicer towards an after day pill versus you know like looking at the pictures of an eight month you know being surgically removed and they are graphic, but I believe that there's something else. My question to everybody in this room, what is that something else that makes us hate one more than the other? Although, on our moral stance, both are condemned already. Well, I was explaining this to you earlier. It's just the fact that humans are fundamentally sinful. Okay? There are certain things um, that's going to push people into sort of these inconsistent rubrics because of the fact that man is flawed. That's literally the answer to your question is that man is flawed. If you want to know the exact specifics as to why they think that, I guess it would just have to do with having a conversation with the person and getting them to be truly honest about their position, you know? But the fact of the matter is that man is flawed. And of course, in certain instances, you're going to have people who um, are arguing a fierce pro-life position but seem to think less, lesser on the killing of um, a fetus or an embryo early term versus late term. And once again, the reason why that is is because man is just fundamentally sinful. It doesn't mean that their position is not uh, morally correct. It just means that they're just sinful people who are going to be moved by certain sinful dispositions. That's all that, that's literally all that means. Yeah, but it's important to understand how how is it to get to that morally sinful position, right? Because that's closer society, right? Like, the thing is that, like, respectfully, and I, and I, did, I know, but I'm a Christian, this is a Christian thing. You don't believe that the world is held by the devil. You're going to be able to hold instead of be very Christian, you know? So you have to give up on the hope that uh, politicians can be able to hold in this Christian world. You may encourage them to take more Christian like actions as is the duty of a Christian. And I can agree with that, right? But you understand that society for the end of the day has the moment by, you know, we just the being the same, right? And so, for the time being, we're all kind of screwed if you look at it that way, right? But there is a necessity to make this shitty place at least a less shitty place. And we do that by realizing how are we sinful, right? Like, we're going to murder, so how do we stop murder apparently? We're not going to fix it, we just need to manage it for the moment. Right? So how do we manage this moral conundrum? Or at what point does our moral compass? It's already sinful, it's already corrupt because of 
original sin, I wouldn't point that they start to degrade in mass, because that's where we need to draw the line, because we're not going to convince people to be Christians, we're not going to convince them to think that, that killing an embryo versus an eight-month-old, like, is the same thing, we're not, yet, and most people are going to move the laws, right, like, it's, it's, like, most of the voters are going to affect, you know, the decision, so, if we can explain that, if we can Okay, so, sorry, uh, sorry, Ton and Jonathan, to interrupt. So, um, I, I'd like us to just close down this room soon because you know the reason we started it was simply to have a space to celebrate this up? impending overturn of Roe v. Wade. Yeah, my apologies. Um, I didn't mean for it to go off. No, it's okay. It's okay. I think it'll, it'll be great if maybe Jonathan could join you in a, in a room where you're talking about, because you have these conversations pretty much every day, right? Where we talk about um, the pro-choice and the pro-life position. So I think that would be fantastic. But uh, I'd like us to, you know, just um, focus a bit more on the topic of why we started this room in the first place. Um, and then, you know, just wrap up the room, because it, it is a recorded room, so I don't want it to go on, you know, indefinitely. Well, if, uh, if, if you're, I, it's very obvious to me that everybody's moral compass uh, is, uh, is in line with what it represents, right? And at the end of the day, that's the most you can ask of a human to act by its moral. So I celebrate the fact that y'all are celebrating. I would celebrate with you if I could understand better, like, what's my position on it, right? I just think it's a bit complex, but I'm very happy that Morally for all this is a victory. I'm happy because I don't see any evil in anything you're doing. Rather, you have built this good, and I'm happy to see that. That's that's great. That really is. I, mean, I don't mean this in a disdainful way. I'm genuinely happy to see human beings that look at legislation pass that aligns with their morals and celebrates it because people don't do that now. Well, oh, thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate that. All right, so AJF, this is the. Wait, is that the link you were looking for that you wanted to share with us? I think uh, he might be busy in the middle of something. Okay, he's not able to talk? Not right now. Okay. Right, what I'll link did he share? There's something in the chat um, from Lozier Institute. Okay, it's a scientific view of when life begins. I think it was when we were having a conversation earlier about the scientific um, consensus on when life begins. So he found us this reference. Cool, thanks, AJF. I'll keep this in my bookmarks. All right, so I think I'm going to go ahead and shut down the room soon. Um, we had, there are so many rooms um, in my hallway, you know, where people were just debating the pro the pro-life and pro-life, uh, pro-choice positions on Roe v. Wade, and I just wanted to create a space where we could just acknowledge and celebrate what was about to happen, and I really hope it does go ahead, um, because I think it's just a draft decision that they shared, so looking forward to the actual decision. I think what's probably going to happen is that you see some states where um, they go all out with um, legalizing abortion, and then other states where they really crack down on it. Um, so it's probably going to be something that further polarizes the political space, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, it, there's a line in the sand, and people are going to be on either side of that line at the end of the day. In a way, I'm actually glad that's going to happen because it's going to reveal people's true dispositions on the issue. And Jonathan was talking about the moral landscape of it over and over again, and I agree with them on many levels. And if it uh, shows that sort of a divide, then what people are really thinking is going to be exposed and manifested. So I'd rather know what people are actually thinking and why. What is motivating them to think and act in a certain way? And if it, if it, you know, if that's what it takes to expose these people for what they are, then so be it. That's true because it, it will actually force people to think about it. Um, because it's been the default position for a few decades, which has meant that people at the local level don't actually have to think about it. But now that you know their states will be considering legislation to either legalize or um, ban abortions, then they'll be forced to really think about it and decide which way they want to vote, which I think is a positive development. Um, a lot of people haven't actually 
scrutinize their view on abortion and why they believe what they believe. Um, so hopefully this will actually create more conversations that need to be had on the subject. Amen. And to that. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and close the room in uh, the next 10 seconds. Thanks, Ton, for joining us in celebration. Thanks, AJF, for joining us. Thanks, Jonathan, for joining the conversation as well. Um, Jonathan, I would suggest you follow Ton. He has a club where I think you'd be interested yeah, um, I, I follow more this. Conversations. Okay, I okay. Remember last time I had a chemical spill? Remember that, son? Oh, I remember you. Yeah, I, yeah, I forgot yeah. that was... I, that was you? Yeah. I totally yeah, forgot me, that was you, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Did I catch you later? That's how I got to the room. I follow you. Okay, cool, man. Good to talk to you again. All right, man. Good to talk to you, man. Awesome. All right. You take care, everyone. See right, you. On the other side. Bye bye. Um, Sarah's assumptions about what modality is even concerned with in the first place. I don't, you know, you know, he wants to say that. This is a guy. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Um, thank you, guys, for listening to the replay. And this is what I fight for, for move to ban abortion in their states. So it's going to do the same thing because um, I think it would be a better and easier thing to do if we're all coming. Obviously, I hope and pray this continues um, two faced. So I'm going to expect a lot more from my side as pro-lifers um, and more from people who haven't been speaking up, who claim to be to them 100%. And I would go and I would actually help them out with ultra. Huh? So, yeah, just kind of wanted to make... just want to say that this woman here, Floy, she says she's a Christian, but she's actually, she can't even spell. She's a Marianite. Catholic. I got kicked out of a room on Clubhouse. No big deal. I'm not weeping over it, right? <coughs> I'll tell you why it happened. She asked me if I accept Catholics uh, as being Christian. I said no. And then I got booted out of the room by her. Uh... I think I recorded it. I was probably recording it on one of the ones that I did, so <laughs> that's why I blocked her. She's no Christian. She's a Catholic. I mean, she says so there in a profile. I don't hate Catholics. Oh, wow. Her birthday is very close to what mine is, but not that that matters or means anything. Anyway. I'm looking forward to seeing Matthew debating um, Darth again. I find it really funny, actually, you know, amusing. Right, I'm going to leave there, see what else is going on. Now, every major news network had reported on it, and it seems like the documentation, it was like a 60-page court opinion of an opinion that's supposed to overturn Roe. It's been reported on every major media outlet, 
And there's a good chance that it's legitimate.
or try to seek a middle ground. I think women should have the option if it is deemed necessary, but it shouldn't be the necessity. You get what I'm saying? And when I found out about Roe v. Wade possibly getting overturned, um, I thought for a second that this could be uh, concerning. By the way, I should tell you, anybody who listens to this, I'm going to type his name on here so you can read it when you when you see the stream. Right, that's his name, Robert Drynan. SJ, Society of Jesus. It's no such thing, it's the Jesuits. It isn't a conspiracy theory, it is a fact. Robert Dryden. Jesuit. You just Google it. Uh, and and let's just look, I'm not just Google or Wikipedia, there's all sorts of other websites. He was instrumental in getting abortion legalised in the USA. So now there's been... I haven't kept up to date on it, but last time I looked it was about 50, 51 million abortions since it was legalised. That is a lot of dead people. Anyway, I'm going to upload this now. It obtains the actual world, but it obtains there. It explains... 